All right, here are solutions to the uh, Thanksgiving worksheet or practice quiz or whatever you want to call it, one, want to call it uh, for Matthew 43. So the idea here is we're moving into chapter 11 where we talk about two sample hypothesis testing. And so the big thing to look at here is we have one example where we have dependent data and one example where we have independent data. So you have two different samples, or you can think about it that way. And the question is that second sample did the observations on that sample depend upon the observations in the first sample or not? In this first problem, I, I say I suspect that missing class on Monday causes students to do worse on Wednesday quizzes. Sorry, that's kind of preachy and annoying. This came from an old final, and I guess I used to be more preachy and annoying. Um, and so what I did is I tested this claim by calculating the average score of 36 randomly chosen students who missed class and 49 students who did not miss class. It's not the same students, it's 36 here and 49 unrelated ones here. Uh, because they're different students, this would be independent data here. Independent because second sample doesn't depend upon. I don't know if it's a good idea to define independent using the word dependent, but whatever. Doesn't depend upon first sample. It's a pretty weak explanation. Um, but maybe the words that I, maybe my explanation talking was better than what I wrote. Uh, okay, so I got independent data. So what that means is that my null and alternative hypotheses are going to compare two different mu's. Uh, my null hypothesis will compare the mu of the students who missed class with the mu of the students who did not miss class, maybe M and C. And the alternative hypothesis is my claim. And I claim that the students who missed class do worse than, that's the less than sign here, students who went to class. So there's my null and alternative hypothesis. If I'm going to do any hypothesis testing, I better go through the problem and identify all the information that I'm given. So for my group that who did miss class, there were 36 of them. So maybe N of the group that missed was 36. And they had an average quiz score of 68. So X bar for this missing group is 68. And the standard deviation of this missing group is 16. Um, but then I got this other group, 49 students that went to class. So this is the N of the students that went to class, that's 49. Um, and their average quiz score was a 75. Look at them. X bar sub C is equal. These are pretty low average quiz scores. Maybe I shouldn't write quizzes so hard. Um, and a standard deviation of 10. So this is the standard deviation of the students that went to class got a 10. So what I'm supposed to do is test this. Oh, that kind of turned out weird. Okay, whatever. This new software is killing me. There we go. Uh, with 95% confidence. So this gives me my alpha. Alpha is always one minus your level of confidence. So in this case, it would be 5% or 0 0.05. So what am I going to do with all this? Well, I'm going to run a hypothesis test. I would love to pull up a calculator, maybe a calculator that looks something like this, and run the hypothesis test for you. But with my latest upgrade to the latest software, which hasn't been working very well, this thing doesn't work. Look, I can press buttons over here, and sometimes it'll make a button work down here. But it's not like systematic. I can't just press a certain distance above and below. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Uh, needless to say, I can't use this thing. So what I'm going to do is just kind of talk you through how you could do this with a calculator. So p-value method, which is all that we're going to do in chapter 11, I'm asking you to determine the test statistic and the p-value. Anytime you are doing problems from, this is 11.3 in our class, when you're doing independent quantitative data, what you are going to be using is two sample t-test. Uh, you can find that on your calculator if you press the stat button and then you scroll over to tests the third column and then you scroll down it's the fourth thing in my list it says two samp t test and if you hit enter there it'll ask you do you have data or do you have statistics about the data in this case i don't have data itself i have statistics about the data all this stuff up here so i'm going to enter all those statistics um, it asks me for x1 bar Maybe I'll make my one group the group that missed class. 
So that would be 68. Um, S1 or SX1 would be my 16. N1 would be my 36. X bar 2 would be the average for the students who went to class. That's 75. S2 would be the standard deviation for those students, which was 10. And N2 would be 49. Um, my claim is that mu1 in the parlance of my calculator is less than mu2. Uh, so that will be the second of the three choices it gives me. I'm always going to leave my data unpooled in this class. Uh, and then I go and hit calculate. And when I hit calculate, it spits out a test statistic and a p-value. My test statistic, it uses the letter t to denote. And I'm getting negative 2.31 if I round it to a couple decimal places. And the p-value, I'm getting as 0 0.012 if I round to a couple places. Uh, so... I guess that's all I'm supposed to do is determine the test statistic and the p-value. There they are. But really what you want to do is be able to use those to state your conclusion. Well, in this case, what I'm going to do anytime I use the p-value method is compare my p-value and alpha. My p-value is about 1%. Alpha is 5%. So I note that my p-value is less than alpha. So maybe I'll write something like because p-value is less than alpha, there is sufficient evidence to, I'm being a little bit lazy on what I write, reject the null hypothesis, and therefore conclude that missing class lowers your quiz score, or causes lower quiz scores. Something like that. Um, so that would be my conclusion. That's the end of this first problem. But there's a second problem. Because I wanted to give you one example that where you had dependent data and one example where you had independent data. We did independent on the other one, so you might guess that this is dependent, and in fact it is. The reason it's dependent is because I'm kind of changing things here. Instead of just choosing a bunch of students that missed and then a bunch of other students that didn't miss, what I'm doing is picking on 10 students in particular and comparing their quiz scores a week that they did not miss class to a week that they missed class. So what I have here is this first student got an 18 one week they did not miss class, and then that same student, that's important, got a 16 when they did miss class. And so the decrease in their quiz score was 2. It's kind of a weird way to report this, but I want to make the point that you have to be really careful here about which column you're subtracting from which column. I did 18 minus 16 equals 2. You might argue that 16 minus 18 equals negative 2 would have made more sense in the context of this problem, because the claim is that my quiz scores decrease. But since I'm noting all the decreases here, a positive number here corresponds with a decrease, which you might think of as a negative number in quiz scores. Anyways, let's go through and do this thing. Um, is the sample data dependent or independent? It's dependent um, because using the same students, I guess. Using the same students in both samples or in each sample. Uh, state the null and alternative hypotheses. All right, my null hypothesis and my alternative hypothesis, I'll use H0 and H1 to denote. Uh, and those are always going to compare mu sub D. So this is the average of the differences and the number zero. The null hypothesis will also say that always say that mu sub D equals zero. The alternative hypothesis is a little bit tricky here. Um, you might think it should be that mu sub d is less than zero, and it would be that mu sub d is less than zero um, if I took 16 minus 18 and reported negative 2 here. But what I actually did is I reported the decreases in quiz scores, so positive numbers here correspond with decreases in quiz scores. So my claim that the quiz score decreases corresponds with positive numbers over here for the differences. The differences being greater than zero tells me if my quiz scores decrease. Uh, so now what I want to do is use the p-value method, um, determine the test statistic and the p-value. Anytime I have dependent data, I'm just going to be using a t-test. 
So I hit the stat button and I go over to tests and it's the second thing on my list that says T test. Um, and I can either give it the data or the statistics. In this problem, I gave you both. Right? You could put in this data here or you could put in these statistics about the data. I think it's easier to put in the statistics about the data. So I'm gonna use this as X bar, sub D maybe. And this is the standard deviation of D. And I am going to type that into my calculator under the t-test menu. So I'll select stats. For mu naught, I'll put in zero. For x bar, I'll put in 2.7, I think it was. Yep. And for the standard deviation, s, I'll put in 3.85. N, I'm going to put in 10, which is a little bit tricky. You might think there's 20, but there's really only 10 observations because it's really this column that I'm testing, not these two. So I'll put in 10 for n. My claim was that mu was greater than mu naught. So that is the third of the three options it presents. If I hit calculate, it'll spit out a test statistic and a p-value. The test statistic it gives me is 2.2177. So how about 2.218 maybe? And the p-value that it gives me is 0 0.02688. So 0 0.027 maybe. Um, and I can use those to state my conclusion. Again, my p-value is less than alpha. I think I changed alpha in this problem. Yeah, 90% confidence that tells me that alpha is equal to 0.1 or 0 0.10 if it's easier for you to see that that's 10%. Uh, so my p-value is about 2%. Alpha is about 10%. So my conclusion going to be the same conclusion I had above because p-value is less than alpha. There is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that missing class decreases test scores. Or quiz scores, I guess they were. Um, you might want to write this with a little bit better English and maybe some decent penmanship. But I'm not gonna do either of those things because I wanna stop this video here. This is actually the fourth time I've made this video. I've really been struggling with this software. So if I seem a little bit annoyed, um, sorry, it's not on you guys, it's on me for not getting software that works. But hopefully this helps people out, helps you learn the chapter 11 stuff. Um, hope you have yourselves a good Thanksgiving and I'll see y'all uh, when we get back to class.